in Colorado and now I have returned back home and I'm um, back to my adopted home of Oklahoma. I'm married in Oki so we couldn't stay very long and our kids or grandkids live here so we're excited to be back and um, my friend Dana and I have worked together um, for several years while I was at Western Heights with GT and fifth grade there so we an intervention I was an interventionist with them as well. So Dana's um, going to be joining us here in a minute and I'm going to get started. I'm going to be able to share the screen with you and uh, talk a little bit about what our lesson is. Today we're going to be talking about the history of pancakes and I taught this lesson in Colorado for two seasons. Um, I had an, a, a seventh grade elective um, that we taught in a small rural school and it was about social emotional learning. And so we use the Covey materials, Sean Covey's materials for highly effective teens, seven habits. And this is habit three, doing first things first in our life. And so we talk about making sure that we're well, our fam whatever's important to us that makes as a well-adjusted student and so most of the time we talk about family and relationships and friends and I tied this to this uh, lesson as our uh, cumulative project um, to make pancakes because we all know if we don't do it just right we'll have a uh, overcooked pancake or undercooked pancake too thin um, too thick and so it's all about the putting first things first in a recipe step so um, you can use this with uh, all ages of, of kids. The lesson on uh, Ag in the Classroom is adapted very well up even through high school because it talks about the chemistry of baking and making the pancake. And it gives them experiments that I actually used when I taught seventh and eighth grade science with Putnam City before I went on to Oklahoma, uh, back to Colorado for a couple of years. And we used this same uh, lesson there. So it's, it's a lot of fun. It's usually the talk of the town. And um, I invite my families to come in and do that with us. And so uh, it's an exciting time to have um, parents, grandparents, smaller, younger siblings come and learn about the history of the pancake or anything I do with Egg in the cast Classroom. I invite my families because it is such a fun time and it's well worth the effort and the learning that takes place is really exciting. So I'm excited to share that with you. Um, let me run to the PowerPoint. And this is the Welcome to Cl Pancakes PowerPoint that um, I would have started with today if we were in person. So we're just doing it through Zoom. And it takes us through the, the lesson. And then I'm going to also talk to you about um, how I start a classroom. Uh, Dana and I both use responsive classroom and um, we are really into making sure we start our day. I am a GT specialist and I've been an interventionist and now I've been a science teacher for middle school era and so we change hour on the hour. So I always start with a greeting and um, one of the other uh, shout outs I'd like to give is the Port Council of Oklahoma. They um, give out a um, grant. They partner with Ag in the Classroom for grants. And so this is something that I've gotten in my Port Council grants that I've received. And he is of course named Wilbur. And we use him as our greeting to start the year with. And it's just a simple handoff at the beginning of the year. And they just pass him around. And then um, we say hello. And then eventually we get where we toss him and we can toss him um, to somebody who has not had him. And then we get to where we don't use names. Um, everybody's just kind of aware of things. And so um, this is a shout out to Port Council. Um, you write a grant, but pretty, every time I've gotten a grant, I've gotten a, a little uh, stress ball from him. And um, so anyway, that's a big shout out for the Port Council. Whenever I uh, do grants, I make sure that I'm advertising. And um, so one of the things I'll tell them is that um, I make a poster through Vistaprint. And that's behind us, back on my back counter. I hope you can see it. Um, and then I just put on here Oklahoma Ag in the Classroom with Oklahoma Pork Producers. Um, also, I tell my made in Oklahoma people that donate to us 
that I will put their things out on the poster as well. So to keep this poster not uh, just kind of generic, I would I would have made little uh, Velcro dots to put the people that donated to us through Made, made in Oklahoma Agriculture, it Made in Oklahoma Coalition. Um, so let's go and this is data everybody she's got here. <laughs> and um, so the lesson starts with the PowerPoint, pancakes please. And Dana and I, um, one of the things that we would have done in our classroom when you would have walked in is you would have been able to join up. And then I would have had a KWH uh, L chart um, about what you know already about pancakes. And the, and the kids, you could do this on your whiteboard, you know, your big posters. Um, and I've made it as a distance learning. So it is on the Google Classroom and then the kids would click on this, bring it up, and then to make it to where it's writable, they go up to the upper right hand corner and there are three vertical dots. Here's that uh, chart from the PowerPoint that I have on Google Classroom. And um, they can write on it. The kids know how to transfer that out. It's, it's part of their uh, resources or their tools that I've, that I've um, added. And they uh, bring it up, they click it open, uh, go to the upper right hand corner, three vertical dots, click on that and a drop down box will say open in. And I have found it always to be able to open in best for me um, is um, Doc Hub. And then that way they can, um, it'll come up just like it's, it won't be malformed or adjusted where it'll come up just like they, like you see here. And they can put a text box in and answer their questions save it and share it back with you. So um, if they're doing distance learning, they can do that, or even in the classroom. The next sl slide that we have is a, a game. So in responsive classroom, we start with their greeting and then we do some sort of team building activity. A lot of times we use it into a review from the day before and we just make a game of whatever we want them to tell us again what they remember or like me it, it might introduce a science concept or and um with dana she might use it for whatever her reading block is that morning so um this one is a kahoot so we were going to do it all in class and you would have gone to kahoot you still can at some point in your day today and try to name that pig and um it's just a little uh, game kids love kahoot um and um, I find it having good qualities to help for do review before a quiz. And then uh, the next slide talks about um, what we've talked about, tossing Wilbur. Um, we talked about before you do that greeting, make sure you model everything because you're going to have those kids that want to peg somebody. So we talk about underhand toss and we talk about soft touch and kind words and kind eyes. Um, I've kind of talked about my granting award and that's where Wilbur came from. Um, fall and spring are the at times that we have to apply for our grants. I would encourage you to encourage other teachers to apply the 15th of October and the 15th of February. And I put that in my Google calendar a month ahead of the due date. Normally what I do uh, summer, I write my grant for October and then um, Christmas break, I write it for February. So I kind of give myself a plenty of time to get them and I send them in as soon as I get it done. So that's finished and I'm safe with that. The next slide is our introductory activity. I have all of those videos and everything in line on the, the, the materials for the students and for you to be able to click on. Um, we review habits one and two, and then today's habit is first things first, and we talk about having the recipe. And then we're gonna go watch a video about when you give a pig a pancake, or as you see back here, um, hopefully you can see, I'm gonna test it, do it that way. Um, I just ordered off Amazon, it just arrived, um, the, the hard copy. And every library that I've ever worked in, in districts has this. So I use my library a lot and I don't buy my own material books anymore. Um, so that's the, that's the um, trade book that we use and it helps us keep the reading portion in. And even your secondary kids love the old fashioned trade books. We've all heard them talk about they miss elementary because they don't do the fun stuff. 
you know, and so bringing in an old trade book um, that they may have read when they were little, it really endears them and they um, enjoy it. And so there's the information for on this slide for you for your uh, grants. And then we talked about using the KWHL statements. And then the next thing on the slide is going into the history. I've made a, a rubric for you that you can do that. Um, I like to partner two or three in a group when we do uh, this type of work. Um, we talk about expectations and procedures. We talk about doing a walk and talk, what that looks like. I'll have kids model it. Um, I do set a timer to keep me on time, and especially when I have guests in the classroom so we can get through everything. And so set a timer for three minutes to find four cards per team and you place them into a timeline. And I have those just up on the cabinets, taped to the cabinets. Um, I make them and laminate them and then tape them up. And those are the statement cards. And they're kind of going blind unless they know a lot about the history of pancakes, but it's really good for them to get something, especially secondary, use their reading, inferencing skills, and their timeline skills to be able to pull a timeline when that uh, card where it would go. And then on the opposite side of the room, I'll have the timelines put on the pigs. And this little pig guy here, I, I enlarged to one page, print off, and then I um, or type on the dates that I have for the timeline. So that's where the timeline comes in. Now it's time to do our baking. Uh, we use, if it's uh, distance learning, and I did this with distance learning this year with um, my kids in GT, and um, I did a video, and then they got the video of me doing the actual baking activity, and then on that following Thursday, we had a Zoom meeting, and so, and they got a list of all the ingredients that they would need, um, and we, we did, um, chocolate chip cookies. And that was with a writing activity that I had started in the school year in January. They do a self-published book type thing. And it was the how-to uh, explanatory genre for all of my GT kids. And so um, they got to see me do it. And then we did it again together on Thursday in the Zoom. And um, so you can do this and just let them know what they're going to need ahead of time. And you could do it as a distance learning activity. Uh, Pre-assigning the jobs is really important. Uh, make sure you review your expectations or procedures and any questions the students have. And they'll have a lot of questions about baking. Um, and then I demoed each step and I set a five minute timer for myself. So they see me as we're walking through it. So I'm walking them through. This is how you're gonna do the dry ingredients. This is how you're gonna do the uh, wet ingredients. And what I have done for the sake of time, because normally I only had a 40, 45 minute time frame, um, even with GT, is I would pre-do the bag, the dry ingredients, um, and have them pre-measured. Um, just, it just saves time and mess. Uh, but if you want your kids to measure and talk about fractions, you know, that's a great thing to do. And I just pre-measured, and then we talk about how they're going to add. So I'm going to have Dana. She's going to open the dry ingredient. I'm going to put in the wet ingredient, which is the one egg yolk and the one cup of milk. And this makes it enough for one group. And then Dana's going to close that up and make sure it's closed and secure. And we talk about making sure it's closed and secure on our jobs. Connie, I'm going to interrupt you real quick. Uh, we had a question. What method did you use to video yourself? Um, like the setup, equipment, software, stuff like that. Um, I videoed with um, my computer video system. Just this computer right here. Instead of Connie. taking pictures, I just used my, my own video system in my computer. And hey, then, Connie, uh, one more thing. I'm sorry, one yeah. more thing. Under view, can you change it to presentation? Some of, uh, some of us are having oh, yeah, a hard yeah. time to be able to read your slides. Okay. Thank you. 
There we go. So Dana is, uh, and I'll show them that how to do the dough. And you know, you don't want to have them overdo it. We talk about that, that we need to make sure that we're um, just gently and we all have their groups, they're pre-assigned. And I have cards for you on the uh, lesson that you can already pre-assign those jobs. Each kid's gonna have a self-grade rubric. It's also on the cards. And this link here will take you to it as well. And then we talk about cleaning up our mass. Oops. And back, there you go. And then the group that cleans up the best, I always give um, some sort of basket gift. And usually, you know, you can find you, if you get some from the, uh, I just get little pig things, you know, stickers or um, pencils or something like that. They'll, they'll love almost anything. Or extra pancakes, that's a good price too. <laughs> So let me see here. Okay, so this is the Made in Oklahoma Coalition. I contact them every time Dana and I have done lessons with you guys, yeah. and they've been fantastic and, and have always donated. In fact, we already had the Compadres Coffee Roasters. They are a nonprofit, as well are Grounds for Compassion Coffee Company, and then Imperial Food Services. We're going to set up a coffee bar for all of us, so we were going to have all kinds of neat coffees. I like the um, Grounds for Compassion, I believe is out of um, Bethany, um, and they have like really cool blends, like uh, it's almost would be almost all you have to do is add your creamer or your milk for your latte. So they have like a cinnamon, a vanilla, um, they just have some really neat coffee blends and as well as compadres. And compadres, um, they're, they're also into education. Um, they employ, and it's near the state capitol, so our friends Ag in the Classroom may know about this coffee shop, but there's a coffee shop nearby and they do the coffee and they employ special needs employees. So um, that is near and dear to all of our hearts, yeah. seeing that our kids are ex being able to be offered positions and jobs that um, just makes them feel so, so part of our community. And so they are well worth um, trying to buy some coffee from because <laughs> I'm, so, I'm kind of into that for nonprofit people. I, I think that's a great thing to be. Amelia's yogurt had already donated our yogurt. So when the um, call for us to do Zoom only came, um, I, I shared the, uh, our egg in the classroom people can take home those yogurts. French, French yogurt is in the little glass jars. Their website is awesome. They have lots of recipes to use their yogurt to make like pumpkin bread and lemon loaves. And, um, and I would think you could use uh, yogurt in your pancake mix to give it some flavor too. And that was one of the things I thought we might would try if we were together. Um, also, I know a lot of people are, uh, are maybe you're gluten intolerant and for a breakfast item in a classroom or even in the, it, when we were working together, you may not have been able to have a pancake. So I was going to have some alternate uh, breakfast type food item for you. And Amelia spilled that spot for us. And Griffin Surf, they were the first people that donated, of course. And uh, living in Colorado, uh, every time we came home to Oklahoma, we, we were buying six or more bottles of Griffin Surf to take back to Oklahoma with us, I mean, to Colorado with us. So um, they're a very, very well um, established company and just great. Um, mm -hmm. Shawnee's, Shawnee's yeah, Meals. Muskogee. Yeah, they're out of Muskogee and Dana's from Muskogee. And um, Brahms, um, I use Brahms products all the time in my home. That's our main um, dairy. And actually we get a lot of our meat from Brahms as well. So um, that's what I use today in our um, cooking thing. And I kind of set it all up. I'm gonna flip it here and show you the, the items that you might need to have. And um, can, I see them? can you guys see this? Yes, we can now, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so these are the items that I used, and I have to laugh because, you know, I've been near, married nearly 45 years, or this is our 45th year to know each other. Uh, we've been married now 40, 41 years. <laughs> and um, I my Pyrex bowls, I just learned this summer from a friend of mine that scavenge is all the uh, antique malls for these bowls. And uh, so now I have antique uh, <laughs> cooking ware. <laughs> so I had to bring that up. I think that was kind of cute. Um, so I um, pre-do the egg whites too. 
and the oil for the students. And so I did that today before we started. And I showed them while I'm doing it. Um, it's got the oil in it. And then we're gonna add this in. So it's one egg white whip stiff with one tablespoon of oil. So that's the last product. And we talk about folding that in. And um, so we show them how that is easily done. What I normally do is I whip up all the eggs for how many I have. So I have eight stations. I would whip up eight eggs and it's about a cup of egg white. And so they bring, the person who has that responsibility brings the bag to me and uh, they scoop in a cup, measure out a cup, and then they gently pour that into their bag, secure it and okay. take it back. Yeah, and take it back. And um, I talk about folding. So we lay it down and we fold with the bag. Um, I have done it with no bags, but so much of my stuff I do when I bake with a, a, a egg in the classroom has bag recipes. So they're used to using this. We've done the smoothies, the ice cream for science, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I've gotten grants for all of those as well to help me get those materials. And um, so we talk about folding, how it's just folding it in and they take that, that up, uh, uh, bag and they lay it down on the counter and just kind of fold it in and then once we think we've got it all kind of lightly mixed and I tell them you do want to see some egg white you don't want it all mashed in and then they take it and they gently push it down to the corner kind of and we and I show them this the uh, like a frosting bag and we move most everything down to the bottom and then we'll twist it like a uh, into a cone shape and then you can talk about some of your math 3d stuff then and then you show them and then we go over here and i've got the um can you guys see there the cooking thing and so then you make sure i'm going to put this on for a little bit and dana's going to cook these here in a minute she'll snip them off with that i have also had them use that in a solo cup just clip it off and put the batter in a solo cup and then they pour from the solo cup. So you can do it either or. I've done it directly. Um, my older kids are pretty good about doing directly, but then again, some older kids, not so much. So you kind of can give them those, that option. You could put it in a solo cup or just do it from the bag. And so I put it all the way up. Okay, so I'm gonna let that pan work up and we'll let Dana cook those. And then I'll get back to you with a nice, plate of cooked pancakes. So I'm going to escape this screen and we're going to go to the time lesson. Now this is the timeline and this is where the lesson comes in um, for the history of pancakes. And I, after, so I do the, the, you can do this any way you'd like. You could do the history first and then have the kids do the tasks cards and match them up to see what they remembered from the lesson. Um, I do it with my GT kids. We do that first. We do the task cards first and then we come back and have the lesson and then we did the pancakes. Um, and so and that would that takes about a 50 minute period of time. That's from start to finish. Can you guys see this one? The screen? It's not very clear. It'd be better if you went ahead and turned it to presentation for us under yeah, view again. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Make you dizzy. Okay. And I think we're all going to need the address to your house for those pancakes. Yes. Because I'm pretty sure you're making <laughs> everybody hungry. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so this is my uh, beginning. And we talk about what does that look like? We've already read the book. So we've kind of, um, we've done that as an introductory activity um, to the, the activity. We've read the book or watched the video and we've already done what is the pros and cons of uh, his, his behavior, his social emotional learning skills. Uh, what does he need to improve upon? And then we're talking about how we want to make our pancakes look something like this. And then we talk about the history of pancakes, centuries old. In fact, we have known that over 30,000 year, years ago during the Stone Age, researchers have found pancakes in the stomach of Otzi. And most of our high schoolers and middle schoolers actually know a little about Otzi. 
Um, and so we talk them, take them here. And then this video plays and um, it is National Geographic. Um, and it is graphic because it is the actual OTSI. And so I talk to them, uh, you know, that we're going to watch him before we eat because you want to do, you want to watch this while we're eating. So um, that's a video about him and how the scientists found um, that he actually did have what was probably something like a pancake in his tummy. So we now know here's a date. And then we talk about what we put up on the wall, how many of us matched the Otzi to the Iceman and when was that and which pig was he? And I ask kids who had the uh, Otzi card and then they tell me where they placed it. So it's a whole review. And then we talk about Greek and Roman era from 3100 to 34 before Christ in ancient Greece and Rome. And they made them from wheat flour, olive oil, honey, and curdled milk. And we I'll talk when we talk about our recipe when we're making ours, I'll refer back that it's the recipe has not changed all that much. And then we've already, most of us have taken some sort of poetry class by, uh, by especially my GT kids, so they know who all these people are. And uh, we go look at their poetry, and these are primary sources that we also talk about. And then we talk more about them. Um, we talk about uh, Latin for the sweet form of a batter. It's Elisa Dulcia, I believe that. I Sometimes I will take my kids to have it pronounced for me if I'm not for sure. Um, they were fried and served with pepper and honey, and they were invented in medieval, and so then we go back, and how do we know? We go back and find our medieval cookbook, and I take them back to this primary source. Then we talk about the only, only pancake race traditions, and that started in the 13th and the 15th centuries in England, only England, and we talked about how a high, uh, the housewife was cooking uh, a traditional Shrove Tuesday pancake, and this is around um, Easter. And as a church bell summoned the townspeople to the Shroving service to begin to, the, to ring the bell. Anxious to get there on time, the women immediately ran out the door with their skillet still in her hand. This oversight immediately turned into a beloved tradition. And it was kind of neat when I was talking to the um, compadre owner, he asked me, are you going to tell them about the English only pancake race and the, the uh, Kansas, how Kansas still does it? I said, yes. So he was all excited because he actually knew something um, and that I was still sharing that with students. And then we talk about Shakespeare. It was during the Renaissance. They would flavor them with spices, rose water, sherry, and apples. And we talked today how we can add things to make a pumpkin pancake, a cinnamon apple pancake. Um, when you go to IHOP, how many different types they have. And then again, in 1599, and in the play of 1603, we go to a primary source that Shakespeare wrote, and it's called Pudding and Cakes. That's how we know that he actually made a play, and pancakes were center stage. Then the Renaissance period's still happening. Everybody loves them, and, uh, and who can say no to pudding? Well, apparently people in the Renaissance felt the same way. It was very, it was very surprised to see this recipe in a cookbook from the Renaissance because I had no idea that they had that kind of food. Well, not the pudding so much as the pancakes, but when looking at the recipes, it's interesting to see how different or similar they are to our modern day recipe. And then we talk about Easter, that brings us back to that Shrove Tuesday and the last day before Lent. And since Lent is a time of abstinence, everyone prepares by getting rid of rich foods, such as your eggs, your butter, and your milk. And the favorite dish to use up all of those ingredients was pancakes. And Fat Tuesday and Pancake Fair, that is also known as Mardi Gras or Fat Tuesday. So we talk about that. And I take them to uh, Britannica primary source that shows that. Flip and Run, this is um, up in, still in England. And we talk about how that has morphed into a really fun, family-friendly event that they do. And we talk about that. And then we go to the onlypancakerace.org. And then I move into the science. And this is for um, everybody, but especially my, I use this for my seventh and eighth graders. And I'm gonna be teaching sixth grade science. And most of eighth grade science has been kind of moved down to sixth grade now. 
on the new science standards. So it's kind of neat that I've already done those other lessons and kind of have a background in all of that uh, myself. And uh, so we talk about what leavening is and we talk about what yeast, and I uh, had yeast packets so they can see the different leavening. And we actually did this as part of our labs in eighth grade science, and I did it with my kids in Dolores as well. We used, I save um, glass bottles, those lemonade, uh, Mike's lemonades, and then uh, that's, they're perfect to use for um, doing these experiments, and we put the balloon on top. We, met, we follow this just exactly, and we see who releases the most gas. And then that's what helps us get the fluffy pancakes. So, um, then make them real big. yeah. So, we, here's Dana, she's gonna show you on a made in Oklahoma uh, Pioneer Woman's Plate. Um, these are about the size I encourage my kids to make. Um, some kids wanna make big, big, big ones. I don't really, I'm not that much of a stickler on it but you may want them just to do, you know, uh, small pancakes. Yep. Connie. Yes. All right. I had a question about how long, like, do you teach this lesson over several days or uh, about how long does it take you to teach the lesson? Okay. Um, I can get everything in to the baking of the pancake in one session. Uh, the science, I do the next day. Sometimes I've already done the, the, the science the day before. So then we have the, they're, they're already blown up, you know, and the, the we can, then we kind of graph which had the highest gas release. Um, okay. So, um, but definitely you can get the pancakes in one setting and the kids can then sit down and enjoy their pancake and have a good time. Um, so we do that. Um, let me see. Anything else? Well, and you can see how many pancakes were made yeah. just from that one bag. Yeah, that was one cup recipe. Everything's a one to one ratio. And this actually was an old Oklahoma uh, recipe from my great grandmother. So um, it's been in our family for probably no telling how long, um, but it's a one-to-one -one recipe. So it's easy to teach and remember. Um, so, and that gets enough for like three kids in a group would be plenty oh, of pancakes. Yeah, yeah. And you could do three big pancakes or they could do, you know, two small or mediums. So are you, are we still seeing you? You seeing us? So that's the, um, ag this is our, um, at our Google Classroom lesson. So it's got everything in there for you. It's got all the videos, all the links, um, all those things in there for you. Um, anything else? Do you guys have any questions? Dana wants to know. <laughs> We want to know if you're sharing the recipe with all of us. <laughs> yes, it's, it's on the, uh, here it is, let me see. It's on the PowerPoint about the pancakes on the recipe. Uh, welcome to pancakes, please. Great, so, thank you. Yes. Yep, and then in the, in the, rest, in the um, lesson, there are, there's recipes to use in the lesson from Egg in the Classroom um, to have your kids, maybe your older kids, if they did the baking soda experiment, they make the ones with the baking soda. If they, if they were the ones that use the um, baking powder, they make that recipe. And I think there's one maybe with like buttermilk maybe. Um, yeah, because I had um, some of my kids brought buttermilk uh, in my older age group kids because they did the buttermilk experiment. And so they brought, um, I actually ask for parents donations on stuff and I, I'm usually pretty good at getting it, but I also make sure I've got everything in case something doesn't come. Um, and plates, I always, you know, I ask for plates, napkins. Like I said, I got all this. Um, this was a really good deal on um, Amazon cute little plates It came as a set with plates and napkins for like six bucks. Yeah. 
for uh, an iBot of six of sixteen. Um, so that was cute. So I got those, ordered those, and then um, this is a vinyl, or actually I think it's cloth, but it's a big background poster of a farm, and um, you could do it, you know, just uh, to spark interest in your class, um, put it out in the hall. I would put it out in the hall, um, and then, you know, you, I would put lettering up for my letter bulletin board and just say, pancakes please, egg in the classroom lesson, and give the date. Um, I was fortunate, I was off, and when I did GT in Colorado, I was off the cafeteria, and we had a station right outside of my room with sinks and microwaves and countertop and all that, and that's, so we got to be making a lot of good stuff while the kids were eating, the little kids were eating lunch. <laughs> so it, it, it picked, uh, piqued a lot of people's interest. And of course, I told all the teachers it was Ag in the Classroom from Oklahoma. Because unfortunately, Colorado just does not do as good a job, y'all. <laughs> so, and then I always use uh, plastic tablecloths. And I got this um, for, I think these are like a dollar a piece. There's six of them in there from Amazon. So, um, it was, you know, really economical yeah, to get this, you know. And so you can even send that out to a parent, you know, if what you want something and send that out in the list. And here it is on Amazon. Uh, I know everybody's got a different level of contributions, but um, I've always been pretty successful when I ask. And especially since I'm inviting the families, they feel like they're a part of the class even deeper when they contribute something as simple as a dozen eggs, you know. So, and I was lucky in Colorado, most everybody, we were rural. And most everybody has their own back to nature, free range chickens everywhere. Um, so, um, real, you know, they're real conscious about eating clean. So, um, so, the, so that's, but yeah, the recipe and everything's, everything should be up there for you on egg, uh, in your Google Classroom. Any other questions you guys might have? Guys, um, I really enjoyed you guys letting us come and share what we do with you. Get, uh, uh, ag in the classroom and I um, encourage each of you to tell your friends about the services that they have everything's already you got your standards there um, and it's not hard to do standards as you know um, we've taught a while so we kind of know what our, where our standards are but um, I didn't update for any of the science standards but um, it's that's one of the things I like about ag in the classroom lessons that they are standard based and um, it's easy to pull them up and put them in a planner. So, um, yeah, I got another feedback that um, it was fantastic and they loved that y'all addressed so many levels. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's because I've done GT, so you have, to, <laughs> you have to do everything for everybody's level. <laughs> and Dana knows that because the classroom teacher differentiation. So, okay. you got to have something in there for the littles people on score, you know, the people that need that little boost. Um, and, and, but I have found that every lesson I've ever done with Ag in the Classroom, it is a huge community. Yeah. The kids just glob onto it, you know. And my best thing is families. They just love it, love it, love it, love it. And so if they love it, then they're trusting you and their kids are that their kids are growing and do and and being exposed to things you know how many kids in today don't know how to fold an egg white in you know or, well, or in my experiences like we had last year and the year before we did what what do you want to be when you grow up and i have one little girl that wanted to be a chef and so we did a project like this and now she cooks at home all of the time yeah she was in third grade yeah. but now She's become having that love of what was taught in the, in the classroom, mm -hmm. not just with the parents. Yeah, yeah. So, Melody, do you want to tell them about our brand new resources that we have? Hi. And Connie and um, Dana, we thank you so, so much. You guys did a fantastic job. Thank you. <laughs> so I am super excited uh, to share this resource with you guys. It's called Red Dirt Symbols, and it is 
primarily for third grade teachers, oh. but it talks about all of our Oklahoma state symbols. Oh, and yeah. most of them have a tie to agriculture, even the ones that you might not think um, do, but even our uh, state motto it has a tie to agriculture. And so it is uh, primarily for third grade teachers. Anyone could use it, but I am super excited. It talks about our state meal, our state, uh, the state flags, of course, our state fruit, our state vegetable. We have a state steak, just all sorts of things. And so I think that third grade teachers are going to love that. And then we also, I did see we have a few uh, younger teachers, but we've also um, updated the coloring book. And so that a, has a new fresh look to it. So I'm super excited to share those with you guys. If you'll get to our website under the resources tab and you can click classroom resources, uh, you're able to preview all of those Okuma Red Dirt symbols is on there that she's talking about. We've also added some new resources and we're adding more all the time. And you can click the request form to request those um, and we can mail them out to you or we would love to deliver them to you. We'd also love to come to your school and uh, do a workshop if that's allowed, but since it's probably not to start with, we could do Zoom sessions and still get the free resources to you so that you have them to use. So um, just be sure to uh, let us know how we can help you and we would love to do that.